So far, we have covered the most important metrics for the classification setting in the context of the confusion metrics. For this, we assume that our model presents us the predicted class without asking much on how certain our model is about the prediction. What do I mean with that? Any classifying model can be set up to either just output the predicted class, or we could also have it give us the corresponding probability of the different classes. In the binary case, meaning we only have two different classes like true and false, this would correspond to either having a model say, this data point belongs to the true class, or this data point has a probability of 60% to belong to the true class. In the standard setting, most models will assume a 50% threshold. So for example, if the model says the data point is 51% true and 49% false, it would still tell you that the data point is true. But this prediction feels rather uncertain compared to a 90% true prediction. If we have a model that provides us with the percentages, we can make use of another graphical metric called receiver operator characteristic, or short ROC. Let's quickly draw an example to talk about it. Okay, so looking at the different axes of our plot, we will have the true positive rate or sensitivity on the y-axis, and the false positive rate on the x-axis. By the way, the false positive rate can also be computed by subtracting specificity from 1. Now, what are the individual points on our plot, and what do they mean? Every single point in this plot will be produced by a different setting of our model. As I have mentioned before, we will need a model that provides us with probabilities of its predictions. What we will do now is to take a number of different threshold values and let our model generate predictions. As an example, we will start with a threshold of 10%, meaning that if our true class has a value of more than 10%, our model will predict true, otherwise false. We then calculate the true positive rate and false positive rate for that threshold and draw the point in our plot. We continue to do the same for many more different threshold values. How many you choose is really up to you. As a side remark, at a threshold of 0%, we will have a point with a true positive and false positive rate of 0, whereas with a threshold of 100%, both will have the highest value 1. And can you think of why this is the case? As our plot uses the true positive and false positive rate, and a threshold of 0% basically means our model will predict all data points as false class, we will end up with zero predictions for our positive class. Hence, both the true positive and false positive rate will be zero. The same goes for a threshold with 100%, as our model only predicts the positive class. Now that we have several different points in our plot, we connect all of them to draw a curve. But how do we interpret this line now? Let's first look at a random classifier. That is a model that just randomly assigns true and false to our data points. For a random classifier, the curve will basically be a diagonal through our plot, just like this. We also know that a higher true positive rate is better, and we also want to keep the false positive rate as low as possible. So where does this get us in an optimal case? The optimal curve would look like this, where our model has a true positive rate of 1 and a false positive rate of 0 in any instance. The less optimal your model is, however, the closer it will get to the random baseline. To sum up, this means that the more your curve points towards the upper left corner of this plot, the better your model performs. And to quantify this measure, you can calculate the so-called area under curve, or short AUC. This metric computes how much area of the plot area lies below the curve you have drawn. Thus, you will always want to be higher than 50%, as this is your random baseline. As a side note, if your model is way below 50%, let's say 5%, you can just swap the classes of your model and it will perform rather good. I will leave this one for you to think about. And as a final remark on the ROC metric, usually this is done for binary classifiers, as the computation for true positive and false positive rate in a multi-class setting gets a bit more complicated. What you can do, however, is to look at each class individually and use the idea of one class versus the rest, meaning that your one class is the positive case and every other prediction is a negative instance. This way, you will have a multiple binary settings again. You can then also compute the so-called micro-average and macro-average of your different curves to get a more general understanding of a model's performance. But this is something for you to discover on your own.